Senator Bob Menendez under fire and the FBI raids one of his longtime political supporters. We have the story. Plus, the president signs the Sandy Bill. We'll see where that money could be going. We'll talk to one of the governor's closest advisors and to two, count them, two New Jersey congressmen ahead on NJ Today. Major funding for NJ Today provided in part by New Jersey manufacturers, auto insurance and more for New Jersey Business and Industry Association members and their employees. New Jersey Association of Realtors, the voice for real estate in New Jersey. More information is online at njar.com. Verizon, communication solutions designed for the people and businesses of New Jersey. The members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. The Star Ledger and NJ.com. And by PSENG, serving customers, strengthening the business community, and investing in New Jersey's future. Now stay tuned for NJ Today. From the production studios of Montclair State University, this is NJ Today with Mike Schneider. Hello once again. Is it a scandal or just a scandalous allegation? It all centers on claims that Senator Bob Menendez has been involved with prostitutes in the Dominican Republic. Now, those claims started surfacing on a conservative website several weeks ago. The website even produced an interview with one of the alleged prostitutes. And things took a dramatic turn overnight when FBI agents raided the South Florida offices of a longtime Menendez supporter, Dr. Solomon Melgan. Conservative bloggers claim he, Melgan, was the go-between that Menendez used Melgan's private plane to fly to those alleged liaisons. The senator's office issued this statement today. Dr. Melgan has been a friend and political supporter of Senator Menendez for many years. Senator Menendez has traveled on Dr. Melgan's plane on three occasions, all of which have been paid for and reported appropriately. Any allegations of engaging with prostitutes are manufactured by a politically motivated right-wing blog and are false. End quote. This comes a day after another Menendez supporter, Benedetto Bajica of Elmwood Park, pleaded guilty in Newark Federal Court to conspiring to make illegal campaign contributions to the senator. And all this happens as Menendez appears to be poised to become chair of the powerful Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Are party leaders having second thoughts about that? I always consider the source, and all anyone here has to look at is the source where this comes from. It's, it's a, a source that has uh, brought up a lot of there are FBI non issues. The FBI. Don't, don't, don't. I, I, I've told you how I feel about uh, the source of this stuff. It's really very, very uh, uh, typical for the source. But the Miami Herald reports the FBI agents who raided Dr. Melgan's South Florida offices were looking for his financial records and alleged links to underage prostitutes. And while the Menendez camp stands firm in its denial, last April, the senator himself pulled no punches when I asked him what should happen to those Secret Service agents, the ones who allegedly got involved with prostitutes in Colombia. If, if the facts are true, uh, they should all be fired. Meantime, Washington tonight is finally finished with the Hurricane Sandy relief package. The president signed it into law last night. That effectively clears the way for $50 billion in aid for New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. It took more than three months to overcome some congressional resistance, and we'll talk about that with two New Jersey congressmen just a little bit later in this broadcast. One of the things we do intend to do, though, is to follow the money, to see where those federal funds end up being spent. That's where we come to the rails and to the roads and to the bridges. Our Lauren Wanko has that story. Now that the Sandy Relief Package is signed into law, Department of Transportation Commissioner James Simpson says the aid is critical. We need to repair and or replace what was damaged, and we also need to improve so this doesn't happen again. So this is like an uh, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, if we spend it, for every dollar we spend now, it's probably saving 10 or $20 uh, if, we've, if, if hopefully this is a 100 or 500 year storm or a storm of uh, the millennium, but uh, you never know. So we've got to be ready. As for the department's top priorities, when the federal dollars start rolling in. There is a long list. I can't articulate them now. Obviously, anything that was damaged has to be replaced. So the rail cars, the substations, power, track, signal, and rolling stock, 
highways. We got to get the highways back. The big problem with our highways is drainage too. We have to set standards. We have to do this in a rational way, so it will take time. Um, now that the president has cleared the pathway for those conversations to really take. Um, take form, then we're going to sit down with the federal government as soon as possible. Simpson joined Acting Governor Kim Guadano today to announce construction will soon begin on the $350 million Route 72 Manahawkin Bay Causeway project. The Acting Governor says the causeway is safe but outdated. The project, 10 years in the making, will be divided into four construction phases. We'll be starting construction this spring by building a new bridge alongside the existing one and then later in the construction schedule we'll completely re rehabilitate the existing bridge. These twin bridges will span the bay side by side, yet they will be completely independent of one another so that if one bridge gets damaged or gets uh, uh, has some sort of a problem, we still will have another way to get on and off an island, which we don't have today. The commissioner says the sequence of construction activity planned means traffic won't be impacted during peak summer hours. Motorists can expect the current two travel lanes in each direction. Wider travel lanes and shoulders, along with a barrier-protected sidewalk, are all part of the plan. The causeway didn't sustain any major damage during Superstorm Sandy and remained opened at all times. The first construction contract will be advertised for bids tomorrow. The project is expected to be completed by 2020. For NJ Today, I'm Lauren Wonko in Manahawkin. Well, the trains are finally running from Hoboken to the World Trade Center. That means that weekday path service is finally back to the way it was before Hurricane Sandy. The floodwaters are gone, the station, the tunnels, they're back in business. And the commuters, they're grateful, sort of. A lot of commuters, um, not enough time, not enough people. I mean, I know they are working, you know, as hard as they can, but you just have so many people going back and forth, and it's just frustrating. It's kind of rough when it's not pretty much running 24 hours like it used to, but um, you know, you pretty much just have to make do with what you've got. So. It could have taken a lot longer based on them not wanting to really restore the service because of money issues and stuff like that. So I guess it's a good thing they work around the clock to get it done. The New Jersey congressional delegation stood firm and united in demanding hurricane relief. But can that unity be preserved? Joining us now from the state house is Congressman Rush Holt. Congressman, good of you to join us once again. Uh, what, Mike, what's, good to be with you. Is, is there afterglow within the delegation? You guys work together uh, so well, by all accounts, in terms of getting this, this package, which the president just signed, delivered. Uh, can this persevere? You know, actually, it's been true for years. It wasn't just in the face of Hurricane Sandy or the relief package. Uh, the New Jersey delegation in Congress um, has worked uh, uh, pretty well for things that are of interest to New Jersey in general um, for many years. So um, and now as far as an afterglow, no, because we don't feel real good about this. It's months overdue. Um, sure, we're glad it's done. And, you know, it's many tens of billions of dollars that are needed in the in the three states. Is it enough money, sir? Ultimately, but, will it address the needs that New Jersey has or or, or did this state, in fact, deserve more? Well, is it, you know, the question is, uh, how do we build for the future? And uh, there's been a lot of complaining by some of our colleagues in Congress that, oh, maybe some of this money won't be used just to repair the damage from this storm, but to build something new. And of course, we've been arguing that, well, if you're going to rebuild, you rebuild by current standards. You rebuild um, uh, not in the in the same way that was damaged before. Um, so, uh, is there enough to you know, put New Jersey's infrastructure in the shape that it should be to withstand all of the other big storms yet to come? Well, no. Um, but of don't course, the Republicans we want to build who, for the future. Don't, but don't the Republicans who who have resisted this in some uh, instances don't they have a point when they say? You know, we've got to watch our spending. And these offsets basically were to, to ring the bell that says that, you know, there's a limited amount of money out there that we're trying to do something about the deficit. And we're trying to do something about the debt. And maybe this was their clarion call. You know, hurricane tornadoes, earthquakes, uh, uh, you know, storm surges, um, these disasters are not what break the bank. Uh, and, and this is not something that uh, has ever been delayed like this in the past. Uh, this country has never stopped to think, well, 
gee, well, maybe this time this one got us. We've been set back, and I guess we're just not going to move ahead anymore. You know, America has never been like that. America has always said we pick up after we're, uh, you know, a, a, after we're hit, and we get up and we move forward. Uh, and so it was really uh, troubling to us that so many people around the country said, "Oh, I'm not sure we can pick up after this one. I'm not sure we can afford it." Uh, of course we can. Of course we could. Of course we will. Um, but you yourself were rather the, unhappy. Uh, you you know, if you look at the voting on ahead, this, sir. it was what was troubling was the was the breakdown. Uh, the people who voted for this bill, uh, for the aid, were either Democrats, Northeast Republicans, Gulf Coast Republicans, or only eight others. There were only eight members of Congress who voted for this aid package who were not either Democrats. Northeast Republicans or, uh, you know, hur uh, hurricane, tornado, well, what, what, alley, do you, what do you make of that? Uh, what, what are you saying then? I mean, what, what's the inference that so, I should so draw that, from that? So that, you know, in the past, things that had never been partisan uh, or regional um, looked like they might be. And so that's troubling to us New Jerseyans, uh, Republicans and Democrats. You clearly were not happy also we after the together, fiscal cliff We issue. stuck together. And, uh, Congressman, and, one second, uh, if you would, please. You were also very open in your, in your uh, criticism of, of the process that resulted in, in what just preceded the whole hurricane debate, the, the so-called fiscal cliff. Uh, another example of, of that kind of, of uh, toxic partisanship in your mind? Uh, certainly the partisanship. And there's another factor in common there, which is um, a government by crisis, dealing with a problem only when you just can't avoid dealing with it any longer. Uh, I mean, that's, that was the case when the Congress was in session New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, dealing with a manufactured crisis. It didn't even need to be a crisis. It had been created by a vote in the summer of 2011, uh, could have been undone by a vote, waved away. Um, uh, and and uh, so uh, it's not a it's uh, you know I I am hopeful I'm an optimistic person by nature I I'm also optimistic right now that this Congress from now on is going to be uh, a little bit different than the 112th Congress uh, which really was a do nothing Congress which really did put things off as long as possible and deal with crises only when. Uh, no one could turn away any longer. Um, you know, I hope for uh, matters of, of uh, uh, fiscal balanced budget as well as for uh, the, the uh, natural disasters that we know come. I mean, every year, whether it's hurricanes or tornadoes or earthquakes or... Uh, you know, I hope we'll put in place in advance what we need to to deal with those things. Have to leave it there, sir. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. A bigger and better bridge that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop is Wanakew, where Passaic County has decided it's time for a new bridge across the Wanakew Reservoir. The old one connecting Wanakew and Ringwood is 80 years old, heavily traveled, and crumbling. They intend to start building a new one this summer, have it ready next year, and pay about $12 million to build it. Our next stop is Little Falls, where 10 people were hurt and hospitalized this morning after an NJ Transit train hit a tractor trailer. Police say the truck driver got stuck making a turn when the gates came down. He escaped without injury but was ticketed for reckless driving. Most of the injured are listed in fair condition. And our final stop is Fort Monmouth, where the first commercial tenant has signed on at the old Army base. Commvault Systems, that's where they're going to build their new headquarters, which will include a $70 million building. They're getting almost $10 million in incentives to create more than 1,000 jobs. And that is your Garden State Express for Wednesday, the 30th of January. He has been called one of Governor Christie's closest friends and advisors by the governor himself. Joining us now is Bill Palatucci. Good of you to come on in. Mike, thanks for having me. This, this, these must be heady days to be a New Jersey Republican, especially a Christie Republican, no? They are. They're, they're fun. Uh, take great pride both in our state but in our governor. 
you know, there was a time not too long ago where kind of butt of jokes and kind of uh, didn't talk about it much uh, out of state and want to quite tell people where you're from. Now, travel, you know, anywhere in the country and sometimes parts of the world. And you say you're from New Jersey, people say, oh, I love your governor or, or tell me about your governor. So, yeah, it, it, it's fun to be associated uh, with New Jersey and Governor Christie at this time. You have a certain level of stature in the National Republican Party as well. And that I don't have to tell you that there's all such a talk about this party being in disunity, having mm -hmm. lost another presidential election, right. uh, losing seats in the House as well. Is this governor the kind of a person who is, uh, has the potential to change the National Party? Well, Would you like to see him do that? Yes, and I think more than the potential, I think he's, he's already doing it. I just came back last week from the, uh, the RNC winter meetings, the National Committee's winter meetings. I, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. I'm on that National Committee. And my pitch to them is New Jersey should be the laboratory for going forward. 13 should be their laboratory. Because you look at Chris Christie, this is a pro-life, tax-cutting governor in a blue state who's doing very well. Not perfect, I disagree on some issues, but this is a guy for a Republican Party who can show a path forward. You can, you can sell them rather easily on the heroic job after the hurricane, no doubt about mm -hmm. it. But then you come back here and the Democrats say, look at where we stand with the budget. Look at where we stand right now in revenue. Look at how difficult things really are. How do you sell them on that? Because there seems to be, sure. some would say, the critics would say, a disconnect between what, what we, the image that's being portrayed and the actual performance in terms of the state's economy. Well, to, to that point, I tell them, look at the actual performance. Put the, the, the Democratic rhetoric aside for just a second. A hundred, over 100,000 new jobs since, since Chris Christie's been in office. No tax increases. Um, the economy that's getting better, most quick categories of revenues are ticking up, not as fast as everybody would like. So if you put that on a national level, the accomplishments that he's had, particularly with Senator Sweeney and Speaker Oliver, whether it's property tax re reform, pro uh, property tax cap, pension and benefits reforms, and the education reforms, that's what national Republicans want to look at, not what some of the, some of the local critics may be talking about. I'm not going to get that, that tax cut on the income tax, are we? Obviously not. Looks yeah. not, not that, that's not going to happen given post Sandy, see where the revenues are. But, you know, so far so good. Some of the early indications, I think, for the long term are really good. Those job numbers climbing 30,000, I think, in the, the last month alone. Um, as we start to rebuild, I think we're going to kind of catch, catch a, a different type of wave, not the way that Sandy brought us, and, and, and things will continue to, to improve. So, one of the places the governor's invested an awful lot of stock in, in terms of his personal credibility and a lot of money, Atlantic City. That seems to be in serious trouble. So. Well, I, I think, you know, depending on your definition of serious trouble, we've all seen well, a revenue rebel. revenue is down I, and, 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 and rebel's not doing exactly. well. Exactly. Relatively listen, speaking. Uh, Un understood that. Yeah. The governor's, listen, made it very clear he's all in Atlantic City. He has put his weight of his office behind Atlantic City, give, give the industry and the town another four years to kind of show that they can turn it around. The, the, obviously, this, the timing of the storm in, in that uh, projection was not good. Um, but I think they'll have a good summer. Their boardwalk is in, in good shape. Atlantic City is in good shape. So I think the long-term future of Atlantic City is good. Can, can they survive long enough, a, a rebel, make it, make it through that, that, that climb back up? You worried at all? You guys worried at all about Barbara Bono as an opponent? Well, listen, this is New Jersey. This is a, a, a blue state. I ran Tom Kane's reelection campaign many years ago, but you had Ronald Reagan as, as president and you had a, a, a roaring national economy. You had Barack so that Obama. was a record setter. You got, right, yeah. you got Barack, and we're not trying to, to, to do that. That's not the comparison I'm trying to draw to well, answer but your, you your, like your to, question. I mean, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, I got to yeah. remember that it's a blue state. You've got a Democratic president, a national economy that's, that's not doing well. But you've got a very effective communicator as, as, as governor, people that, that they connect with. They don't agree with him with everything, but this is a guy they finally see they have a leader and it's somebody that they have confidence in. You want him to run for president? Uh, let's focus on 13. Uh, the sky's the limit for, for Chris Christie, but we've got to get reelected. If he wins that. Do you want him to run for president? Uh, you know, I saw you do this with John Hanson one night. Uh, I'm going to say, like, <laughs> do what? Do fo what? Focus on John, I'm going to focus on 2013 and get our job done here. Bill, I appreciate you coming in. Thank Thanks you very much. Sir. Thanks for having me. We do have some business news for you this evening. Lakeland Bancorp buying Somerset Hills Bancorp for $64 million. This is its first acquisition for Lakeland in some seven years. It also gives them a much bigger presence in Morris and Bergen counties. The Turnpike Authority is going to go out and borrow some money, a lot of money, in fact, almost $1.5 billion. Officials say they need the cash to finish projects like widening the Turnpike and eliminating the traffic lights on the Garden State Parkway. The money, we're told, will be raised by selling bonds, and they do expect it to be available in April. We want to tell you about some bad weather apparently headed our way. It's part of that storm system that ran through the south earlier in the day. 
Tornadoes leaving at least two people dead. High wind warnings are now going up throughout the Garden State, along with a flash flood watch until tomorrow morning. And forecasters say we could see thunderstorms. He is the newest member of New Jersey's congressional delegation, but Donald Payne Jr. is no freshman. He got a head start when he was sworn in last November to succeed his late legendary father. And the congressman joins us now. Welcome back to the program, sir. Well, thank you for having me. This must have been an extraordinary period to, number one, get in a little bit early. So that gives you some uh, a head start on seniority on these committee assignments, right? Absolutely. I, uh, as a matter of fact, I was fortunate to come in in 112. And uh, in our new uh, committee assignments, it's allowed me to become a ranking member on um, one of the subcommittees. So from the very beginning, you have a certain degree of clout, which most of the new freshmen certainly don't have, at least not right away. You were there for also this historic vote over hurricane aid, over the Sandy aid. Yes. What surprised you most about that process? Well, we were very concerned uh, that the leadership uh, in the House had just decided not to take the issue up. Uh, as you know, we were dealing with the fiscal cliff and we're there on uh, January 1st and uh, got that resolved. And we thought the next day we would come in for the um, Sandy relief and got wind that the um, leadership just was not gonna take up the issue right now that for some reason it just could wait. And uh, what, did, what did your, behind closed doors, to the extent that you can share this, the veteran members of Congress They've expressed their amazement that uh, some other representatives from other parts of the country decided to to put this thing off. Were you as surprised as they were? Absolutely. You know, uh, the, why do you what, think they did it? I I don't know whether it had to do with uh, just coming through the whole issue of the fiscal cliff, and uh, I hear that the uh, the Republican caucus was in disarray over that whole issue, and we know the problems that uh, Speaker Boehner went through. Mm -hmm. uh, whether he would be the leader going so into it was the next politics, Congress. essentially, it was politics, sheer politics. Let me ask you about an issue that's a very hot political issue. The last time we spoke uh, before the election uh, on the question of same-sex marriage, you seemed to be a little bit. Uh, Middle of the road, shall we say, and, and shortly after that, you came out with a very strong statement in support of same-sex marriage. The president, in his inauguration, called for true equality when it came to same-sex couples. Do you agree with the president on this? Absolutely, and he has um, just uh, shown great leadership. Uh, his uh, speech uh, on uh, the day that he was sworn in was just compelling and uh, just really gives us an idea of where he wants the country to go, and it is inspiring. In your old chambers of government, Newark City Council, council and the mayor are going at it. There, there were almost fisticuffs at a meeting. Uh, what do you think's happened there? Well, I, I think it is really a case of um, a fight for uh, power and control in the city of Newark. Uh, the mayor sought an opportunity to um, get a deciding vote. Uh, in you think order he did the, the right thing? Uh, I think uh, he wanted to do the right thing, but went about it wrong. Uh, it, it was just uh, a disgrace, really, uh, uh, what came about in that chamber. Uh, some people said it was my fault uh, for leaving or it wouldn't have happened. But, um, yeah, we, we need, um, and the, the difference between the Congress and the council uh, chambers is even though we have discourse and disagree, um, there's a certain bit of decorum. And uh, what we saw uh, in the city of Newark was um, very disappointing. In terms of decorum, Senator Lautenberg's staff seems to feel that decorum was breached, perhaps, by the way Mayor Booker has started to jump into the race for the Democratic senatorial nomination. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with them? Do you think he has a point? I think he has a point. You know, uh, seniority and um, incumbency uh, comes with a certain amount of respect that should be shown um, uh, uh, members that are sitting. Um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the mayor, um, this is something that he wants to do and uh, is moving forward. But Would you support I think, him for it? Well, we're, we're going to take a look and see. Uh, well, Senator Lautenberg, uh, you know, still hasn't made a clear, definitive decision on what he's going to do. So we have to wait and see um, uh, how, where, the, where the chips fall. Last question. A man who supported you 
influential man, Senator Menendez, finds himself now making headlines because some of his supporters have, in the case of Newark Federal Court, pleaded guilty to some illegal campaign contributions. In Florida, one of his supporters had his offices raided, and there are charges of sexual impropriety being thrown around by, by some elements of, of what some people consider to be the conservative blogosphere. Right. What do you think about what's going on with Senator Menendez? Well, I think it has to do with that conservative blogosphere. And uh, it's interesting how um, these issues arise the week it, uh, he becomes the ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, so uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, how this plays out. Congressman, have to leave it there. Thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you for having me. does it for us for tonight. Coming up tomorrow, what are they going to do about all those abandoned boats? We'll take a close look at that part of the hurricane cleanup and we'll ride the rails as New Jersey's most powerful people head for their annual meeting in Washington, D.C. But that does it for us for tonight. Till then, I'm Mike Schneider. Thanks for watching and good night. At psc &G, we believe helping the people of New Jersey goes hand in hand with providing service to our customers. Helping to make the psc &G Children's Hospital a reality. Spearheading community educational programs and sponsoring local teams that make our New Jersey neighborhoods so special. These are just a few of the things we're proud to do for the people of our great state. psc &G, we make things work for New Jersey. Next on NJTV, BBC World News. Tonight on NJTV.